Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Fulfillment demand continues to skyrocket and outpace available labor. To keep up, warehouse operators are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems. Utilizing Six River Systems' award-winning combination of collaborative robots, artificial intelligence, and operational expertise will make your associates and wall-to-wall fulfillment workflow more efficient. No new infrastructure, no change to warehouse layout, easy to deploy and scale, easy to train and retain associates, all at half the cost of traditional automation. Want to take your fulfillment operation to the next level? Level? Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. That's www.sixriver.com to learn more. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas. From the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hello, and welcome to the New Warehouse Podcast. I am your host, Kevin Lawton. Happy New Year to you. And first off, before we get into today's episode, I want to thank you so much for being a listener. Whether you just started recently or have been with the show since the beginning, it really means a lot to me that I'm able to deliver some value to you, and I would really love your feedback on the show. If you love the show, please leave a review. If there's something you think could make the show better or you are interested in hearing about, please email me at kevin at the new warehouse.com. That's kevin at the new warehouse.com. Now, we're going to do something a little different on this episode and take a look back at 2020. Last year, we did a recap of some of my favorite episodes, but this year I started to look back and I realized that one theme of 2020 was pandemic innovation. This is actually a term that, well, I won't say I came up with, but something that just kind of came out of a discussion that I had recently with uh, James Ceramic of Smart BOL, who will actually be on the episode releasing this coming Wednesday. And when I refer to pandemic innovation, I'm talking about innovations that have happened in the last year due to the pandemic. I've said it multiple times on the show now, but even during this dark time of history, we as a people and industry have been able to find a way to innovate and adapt to the new normal. I find this incredible, and it's truly a statement in belief that we will get through this and be better in the long run. And now, to be honest with you, when the pandemic started to happen and things started to shut down, I was uncertain if I should talk about it on the podcast. At first, I thought that maybe I should avoid it and have an outlet that would serve as somewhat of an escape of what was happening since every place you turn, the discussion was around COVID. However, I began to realize that this is changing the way we do business and we'll do business. So, It is something that must be explored. So 
with that being said, uh, here's a clip from episode 72, uh, which featured Jeanette Barlow of IBM Sterling. And this is really, I think, the first episode I did that mentioned COVID. And we're here. She's discussing really what the pandemic means for the warehousing and the fulfillment landscape. I believe the warehouse is and the distribution centers are absolutely critical to keeping companies Mm -hmm. going. Right. Um, We are all turning to buying online. So the, the pressure on the efficient operations in a warehouse. And again, you're, you're spiking your expectations out of these warehouses. At the same time, right. you're also, as you pointed out, needing to create more distance and staggering your staff and things that um, are kind of working against each other. So it's put much more pressure on there and to be more creative and understand much more capably where your inventory is, what you've got, across your various warehouses and distribution centers and, you know, what you can expect in transit. So visibility down into your tier two and tier three suppliers to understand how you're going to really ensure that you don't have this mismatch um, and you don't disappoint clients. And uh, we've seen, uh, and as consumers even, we've Mm -hmm. seen really very different degrees of response. Some are able to, to manage this. And I think because they have made the investment in that visibility, they do have a handle on their logistics providers and what they can provide. They're able to collaborate more capably. They're able to take advantage of uh, investments in the warehouse, order management and fulfillment optimization solutions. Whereas others who have not maybe made those investments before and have relied more heavily on uh, foot traffic in stores, Right. are seeing that struggle on how they um, how they do fill orders at this point in time and keep that customer loyalty. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you have a, a good point there about, you know, relying on that foot traffic. So, so I was curious how you see kind of the idea of the retail store now changing into being more, more utilized as like a distribution center. A lot of, a lot of uh, companies have kind of pivoted to curbside pickup and different aspects of um, trying to get their product to the customer, but utilizing this brick and mortar location that they have. How, how have you kind of seen that shift happen? Well, that's a, that's a, that's an excellent point because a couple of things there. Um, first of all, how do you keep your retail location relevant in this right. time? And frankly, I believe there's going to be kind of a permanent shift in behavior. We will all return to going back to the store, certainly. But, you know, there are a set of consumers that had never been exposed to those conveniences, potentially. Um, uh, I I know my parents were fascinated by, you know, they're in their 80s, the fact that they could do that. And they're like, we may, we may always do this now. (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay, which is great. But I do think there's going to not just be this temporary impact on putting pressure on the stores as part of your um, distribution uh, footprint in that regard. It's going to have a a permanent effect on that and to really start to think about the store um, as sort of key uh, distribution points for you and opportunities to do that. Whether you're shipping from store or you're doing curbside pickup or, again, uh, buying online and actually coming in and picking up in the store. So I do think there's going to be a permanent sort of impact on that and pressure on that. And we're seeing clients do uh, a variety of amazing things. And in certain industries, it's really critical because you don't want to say no to a sale because you might be running low in your warehouse. But at the same time, you've got inventory that's um, going to expire, whether it's fast fashion or mm-hmm. Um, seasonal items, et cetera, you, you want to be able to use that inventory. That is a tremendous um, uh, position on your P&L. So, and you want to be able to keep the store employees um, engaged. So how do you convert stores to that? And a key piece of that are those um, getting, first of all, a global view of your inventory. You have to really understand when you get these orders where where do you have inventory? And so having inventory siloed by channel, I think is no longer going to be an option. And the second thing is how can you use these emerging technologies to help you 
more capably understand where's the best place to fulfill this, right? right. Balancing a variety of factors, the cost to fulfill uh, versus seasonality versus avoiding markdown, uh, capacity of your workforce, you know, as the um, COVID rates spike in different geographic areas, et cetera. How do you, how do, you do that and, and deal with local regulation? So I think that there are tools out there. Certainly we support clients with ours um, that can help organizations do that. But understanding that your online distribution is really no longer a separate channel from your store experience is, is fundamentally going to be critical for organizations. So that was a really great perspective on how the entire fulfillment process changed due to COVID and also a really great insight as well on how to maximize your inventory as a business. So, I mean, now, now saying that is easier than doing it, but, but one technology that has been kind of emerging through this as well and getting more discussion around it um, to help better harness these types of data sets is is AI, uh, which Jeanette goes on to talk about further in the episode. And that's that's from episode 72, if you want to listen to it and haven't heard it before. Um, But yeah, definitely really interesting perspective. And I love how she kind of talked about the pivot and how you have to be more flexible. And that, that has really been a defining factor in surviving the pandemic as a business and how how do we start to utilize these spaces and these places that we can't necessarily use as we normally would um how do we use them now in a different way that can still work for us so so really really interesting perspective there uh and now now as we move into the next clip that i'm going to feature here in this episode uh we're talking to the ceo of losix who's vikram uh, Pavati, um, and we're talking about spatial intelligence, and this is from episode seventy-eight. So, so one way that I also noticed throughout the year that innovation can occur is by looking at existing technology, and then utilizing it in a different way, or looking at it in a different way. So that was the case for Losix, who who's using spatial intelligence technology to understand where certain things were happening within a distribution center for purposes of data collection, also just understanding the status of things. Um, one of their, I think their first kind of product was focusing on trailers at dock doors and understanding when they're there, how they're coming in, all those different types of things. So, so they really took a look at their technology and then understood that they could determine where critical assets like ventilators were located in facilities and also where people were located, which, which helped with social distancing and tracing implementations as well. So, so take a listen to this clip and listen to how they kind of took their technology and then spun it a little bit and made it really implemented to help throughout the pandemic. So, you know, within the logistics space, uh, by the way, we continue to uh, expand our uh, solution for distribution centers. Even in this environment, we have a bunch of deployments going on. Uh, But in addition to that, uh, for safety and wellness, you know, as the team kind of um, took a step back and said, okay, what else can we do with our technology in these, uh, you know, really difficult times? Mm -hmm. And one application that kind of stood out is, uh, the ability for us to locate people inside an indoor facility and to a large extent um, know exactly where they pass by each other or mm-hmm. how close they were in terms of separation distance. So that's enabled by the fact that we are a you know essentially a Wi-Fi based technology and so every building in the world has Wi-Fi right. and, um, and and then we can uh, track people uh, and other things inside a building you know within a specific accuracy of, of three feet. And so if you kind of take a take an assumption that, you know, people are supposed to be at least six feet away, I can tell you with, you know, 90% or uh, with a very high level of confidence over a given, uh, you know, in a given space, mm-hmm. uh, where exactly people were and who they interacted with. So now, while this might sound like Big Brother, and, uh, and of course, I understand that, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be tracked all the time, right. but there are certain kinds of uh, situations, like, for example, you know, there's uh, 
in uh, in environments where uh, most probably you want to be able to, you know, maybe an anonymized basis or in other kinds of ways, you want to be able to know who did I come in contact with and if I can trace that back to uh, maybe a, an incident or a situation where uh, I may need to take some action because uh, then at least I'm informed that uh, I was exposed to something or I should have mm-hmm. been away from something. So that's uh, one application I think that we are, uh, you know, uh, we think that'll be, uh, that has to be done carefully. And of course, you know, without this whole violating people's privacy, you know, maybe it's an app-based application with Mm -hmm. opt-in and not just, you know, just randomly tracking people. But um, so that's, uh, so we call that, that'd be, I think, uh, a really really good one for safety. The other one uh, is, is in hospitals. And this is an application that we were, thinking of uh, working on in the future. Mm-hmm. And as we look at, uh, you know, the chaos that, uh, for the right reasons, I mean, people are just really stressed out and uh, we're looking for assets. We're looking for, uh, you know, for, for an example, I mean, uh, there's, uh, looking, let's say we, in, the, in the past, we would look for a diffusion pump in a, in a hospital and, yeah. and people would like, you know, make sure they had their own version. Now you have, you know, even more life, uh, you know, um, uh, assets are even more important for saving lives, and and you want to know exactly where they are, what their status is, uh, who's using it, uh, and and when does it get available? Or uh, and you know, if someone has misplaced something, you can find that in within a, within seconds uh, and very accurately. So, mm-hmm. uh, so hospitals is an application that we think it, you know, for and, and also nurses too, right? I mean, nurses, right. doctors, assets, uh, it's the same same things that we are. Uh, we have deployed in the logistics space, uh, and and to a lot to some extent, because it's Wi-Fi, the standardization in in uh, in hospitals is already available. So mm-hmm. you know this could be something that uh, we should be able to take advantage of uh, and help people. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So now for that clip from episode 78, we got into the social distancing aspect of the pandemic and utilizing technology to help facilitate it. But for this next clip, we're going to discuss one of the biggest things of the pandemic. And obviously social distancing was huge, right? I mean, I don't think I heard the term social distancing prior to the pandemic in my life. Um, So definitely a buzzword and something that, you know, we all should be respecting so for the next clip we're gonna we're gonna discuss one of the other biggest things of the pandemic in my my opinion uh which is keeping clean and sanitization has become more important than it ever has been and we all have become more conscious of this and on episode 130 with jennifer ward of peak risex we talked about multiple COVID precautions and how companies are evolving the way they use their technology but one interesting topic we focused on was the use of uvc light for sanitizing facilities and it's definitely something that's different than i had kind of previous experience with but really something interesting and i think something that will continue to evolve and be be utilized further so so here in this clip you're going to hear how jennifer explained the technology and how it actually works to help keep things sanitized Uh, the type of uv light that you're referencing is uvc light and Mm -hmm. it is definitely emerging as a way to handle sanitization of facilities and equipment Uh, essentially uv light uses a uvc which is non-visible light so i'm not surprised that you're curious to see whether it's actually working or not because you can't see it and (laughs) essentially what it does is it inactivates any bacteria and viruses at the cellular level 
And what this does is it prevents them from multiplying and causing any infection or any spread. Uh, the eradication of viruses and bacteria uh, via this UVC light, it's accumulative on microorganisms, which means it continues to work. Uh, it's actually a pretty oh, cool technology. And uh, one of the reasons that this actually has become very popular, you mentioned having those wipes. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people are sensitive to some of the uh, irritants or yeah. um, or uh, um, components of those wipes. Mm. Um, and then also those wipes can damage electronics. So if the wipe has too much of the, the cleaning liquid on it, you don't want to have that going into your phone or into a fan on a laptop. Mm. Um, and with many companies trying to avoid the excessive chemical use, this UV light has actually become very, very popular. It's versatile and it's pretty easy. And it can be set up with that motion sensing to mm. ensure that it stays safe. Um, and this is essentially uses what's called a passive infrared sensor. Okay. And it allows for uh, the light to shut off if anybody's hand or face or body comes in line with that light. Okay. Because uh, okay, it's like here, it's, it's, it can be harmful, right? To the skin. It can. Um, it can on people. <laughs> yeah. And so that's one of the reasons that we definitely recommend um, keeping the proper usage in mind, um, making sure that the product has the safety shut off aspect of it. So in other words, if your hand or a person walks into a UV light cleaning area, it will automatically shut off okay. um, using the safety sensors and using correct angles. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely something we've seen become a hot topic um, and it's it's effective. So if you've got your phone, you use it as an example, mm -hmm. any surface that is exposed to that light is going to be sanitized. And in a relatively quick time frame, as little as two mi or 20 seconds, um, three minutes is an average, depending on how far away the device is being sanitized mm -hmm. from the light source itself. Um, but also what's notable is it's anywhere that that light is shined upon, which is also good and bad. And so if you're cleaning multiple products underneath the light at the same time, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But if it's only getting one particular surface of that phone, for example, you would need to flip it over after the initial oh, UV light okay. sanitization cycle is done in order to make sure that the underside is clean too. And you talked about um, briefly about how effective it is, and uh, the UVC light's actually been proven to kill 99.9% .9 of all bacteria, viruses, and even molds in as little time as that 20-second sanitization cycle. And this does include the coronavirus like COVID-19 and also other bacteria and viruses like salmonella, E. coli, even staph, strep, or influenza. Hmm. Interesting. So I guess... I mean, I, I understand, you know, I understand the science and stuff, I guess, but like, how do you know, like, okay, um, this stuff is clean, right? So you, <laughs> it, like you put the light on and then it's just, you just, I guess, time it. And then at the end it's, it's, uh, presumably it's sanitized, right? It's as simple as that. Absolutely. Mm. And you can have it set so that it's a particular time frame or, uh, you know, if, a, for example, if you have a payment terminal that has a UV light uh, attached to it, mm. you know, if uh, it's gone within 30 seconds without use, it'll automatically start the, the cleaning cycle. You can even use, you just mentioned uh, the wand, um, mm. and we've seen that across multiple instances. Um, one of the reasons the wand has is, is become a real hot topic lately is because you can use it to clean um, surfaces that are irregular, um, and it's also able to be used across different parts of the warehouse. Portable, so say, yeah. for example, you have your employee login um keypad that needs to be you know punched in by everybody if you have the uv light that's cleaning that uh, forklifts have uh, many of them have the mobile the vehicle mount units um, in, uh, installed on the forklift so yeah. using the wand to clean the keypad on the vehicle mounted um, forklift computer uh, and even using it for multi-touch points, such as printers in the facility, having that wide range of ability to clean different areas 
is uh, is really quite unique and and really interesting. And you know, as we mentioned earlier, then you don't have to worry about liquids um, or chemicals damaging the right. surface of these these very valuable devices. So that wraps it up for the clips uh, that I wanted to share on this episode. But I also want to mention that there were several other innovations that were discussed on the podcast this year. Uh, so if you missed some of the episodes, I highly recommend going back to check them out. Uh, we did a lot of episodes this year. This was the year, um, I mean, it was only year two of the podcast, but uh, we increased the frequency Mondays and Wednesdays. So there's a lot of content out there. Really, really interesting things that are happening in in the warehousing, distribution, logistics space, and overall supply chain space as well. So highly recommend go back, check them out. If you just started listening or you've missed some episodes here and there, definitely, definitely go uh, take a look. Uh, well, take a listen. And if you have any questions or you want a recommendation, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. Just search for me, Kevin Lawton. That's L-A-W-T-O-N. But, uh, you know, that that's really what I want to share. And I think it's important to highlight that these things have come out of a time that is dark. And I know uh, some other discussions as well, a lot of companies have mentioned how it, it's pushed technology farther than expected where we would be at right here. So a lot of companies have pulled their five-year plans for innovation and technology into this year so we're so we're like ahead of the game there so really really interesting stuff um but you know i do want to recognize too you know while we are not fully out of the pandemic i know that we will be on our way shortly and i hope that you remain safe throughout um you and your family as well and as i mentioned in the beginning of the show if you are enjoying the episodes please leave a rating and if you have feedback i would love to hear from you i really really would um, I love to hear back, you know, things that you find interesting, um, or even leave a comment on the website, the new uh, mentioning, you know, what you may think is missing from an episode or a certain topic you want to hear more about. Um, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. My email is Kevin, that's K-E-V-I-N at the new warehouse.com. So feel free to reach out. Let me know what you would like to hear about on the podcast in 2021. And I hope that we can keep expanding the new warehouse brand and keep uh, delivering value to you as well. So have a great year and be sure to check out the new warehouse.com for more information and episodes. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for the New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.